Warning! Sodium metal is very dangerous and can catch spontaneously on fire. It also reacts explosively with water. Fire safety protocols must be in place. Bromobutane is cancerogen and alkylates your DNA. This video is for educational purposes only. In my previous video, I synthesized a decent amount of one bromobutane. Now I can use it to show you a lot of reactions involving haloalkanes. Ironically, I decided to start with the most useless one, which is the Wurt synthesis. This is one of the first reactions that students learn when they start organic chemistry and is actually the first organic reaction I've learned. It is used to make higher alkane homologs from halogen substituted lower homologs. For example, in this video I will turn the 1-bromobutane into octane using sodium. You may ask yourself then why it is so useless. Well, firstly, because you use expensive halogenated alkane, which can be turned in almost any other class compound by one or two reactions. In Wurt synthesis, we just turn it into alkane, which have no functionality. I mean, what can you use the octane for except burning it or maybe as a solvent for reaction? Meanwhile, the bromobutane can be turned into almost everything and the possibilities get even more if you convert it to a Grignard or Ganolithium reagent. Not to mention that this reaction consumes a lot of very expensive sodium metal. So, not that we are absolutely sure that this is the most useless reaction one can do, let's get started with it. This is my sodium metal. It is placed in mineral oil to prevent it from oxidation. Nonetheless, since it is several years old, it has some oxide layer formed on top of the chunks. To use it, I have to remove all of the oxide layer and chop it up into smaller pieces. I poured a small amount of petroleum ether into a 100ml beaker so when I'm done I can place the chunks in there so they don't catch fire and kill me. It also serves to wash the mineral oil left. I used paper towel to absorb most of the oil and then started cutting. Sodium is very soft metal and can be easily cut with a knife. The feeling of cutting it is kind of like cutting a piece of hard type of cheese. You can see how shiny the cut surface is. However, it quickly tarnished because it reacts with the oxygen, water and carbon dioxide in the air. These reactions are all exothermic, especially when you have a large surface area, as is in the case when cutting it in small pieces. They could get very hot and reach their melting point, which will accelerate the reaction even further and the sodium will catch fire and then explode. High air humidity and elevated room temperature are especially dangerous conditions when working with sodium. I cleaned about 12.45 grams of the sodium metal from its oxide layer and now it's time to chop it. To do it, I imagined that I cut carrots for my soup and it totally can't kill me. Here are my carrots for the soup. I arranged the flask with an addition funnel and a reflux condenser. I will strongly emphasize that you need a really, really efficient condenser for this reaction. For me, the 300mm Liebig condenser was the best I had, but during the reaction it was overflown several times. On top of the condenser, I placed calcium chloride tube to prevent moisture from getting in. The one bromobutane I made was placed over molecular sieves for several days to remove any moisture that might be present. I measured out 37.2 grams of it 
and placed it in the addition funnel. When everything was ready, I rotated the stopcock and let half of the bromoalkane flow into the flask. At first, no reaction occurred and that's why I decided to heat the flask gently with my heat gun. Almost immediately, very vigorous reaction followed. You can see how all the liquid inside started to reflux and quickly got to the condenser. The sodium inside melted from the heat and became blue. I have no idea why it got this color, but it reminds me of the color when it's dissolved in ammonia. If you have any suggestions why this happened, feel free to leave a comment below. Once the reaction started, I kept adding more of the promo alkane to sustain a vigorous reflux. The addition was finished rather quickly and soon the reaction died down. To react any leftover traces of the bromobutane, I heated the flask again with my heat gun. Here comes the most dangerous part. For this reaction, I used a great stoichiometric axis of the sodium metal, which now I have to destroy. The right way to do this is to add some ethanol first to turn it into a toxide and then destroy the toxide with water. Even if you are experienced chemist, this part is very dangerous. In my country, ethanol is very worshipped drink, so I didn't want to waste it without a good reason. Instead, I decided to directly add water to it. Now, I should strongly emphasize that this is stupidly dangerous and under no circumstances must you do it. If any air gets into the apparatus or you add the water too quickly, it will explode. I am very confident in my lab skills and don't really value my life. On this shot you can see the reaction from up close. It is so vigorous that causes the water to turn into steam and evaporates the octane. I cooled the flask in an ice bath to minimize this effect, but it didn't do much. The only way to destroy the sodium was to do the addition very slowly over the course of 90 minutes. Here is how the mixture looked after I added more than 100 ml of distilled water. The floating upper layer is the alkane and the lower layer is the water which have dissolved the sodium bromide formed as well as the sodium hydroxide from the destroyed sodium. However, a few pieces of the metal exploded during the addition and got stuck to the upper part of the flask close to its neck. If I try to open the flask to remove them manually, they probably will catch fire igniting the octane which would basically burn like gasoline. The only way to remove them without risking my life was to get the mixture under reflux and let the vapors react with the sodium. The mist forming indicated reaction happening. When all the metal had been destroyed, I placed the reaction flask in an ice bath to help it cool more quickly. When it reached room temperature, I poured its contents into a separatory funnel. My bravery when I chose not to add the ethanol was now rewarded because its presence in the water layer would have made it a better solvent for the octane. Thus my yield would have been lower. I drained the water layer and collected the organic layer. I then added anhydrous sodium sulfate to dry the octane. 
After 30 minutes, the salt was filtered through some filter paper. Then a simple distillation was arranged. All the octane came between 123 and 127 degrees Celsius, which corresponds well to its boiling point, which is 125. In the distillation flask, I was left with brown colored liquid. And in the receiving flask is the octane. My yield was 10.57 grams, which corresponds to a percent yield of 68. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more such videos, go to my channel page where you can watch them all and make sure you subscribe and turn the notifications bell on.